as of lately, I've been like super focused on trying to figure out ways in which I can improve my music and my sound on machine. And the biggest problem that I hear myself running into lately is that my music is really boring and repetitive. Meaning that I've got the same things happening over and over again and it gets mundane. Like basically when you're making music that's instrumental based, as in your final product that you're putting out to your listeners are instrumental based music and not, you know, they don't have complex vocals and choruses and things going on, you have to do a lot more within the music in order to make things interesting so that you can really maintain your listeners attention. And about a few weeks ago, I finally figured out a method that I could use on machine that allows you to make beats that are really constantly evolving and moving and are, are you know, sort of weaving in and out. And it allows you to create a soundscape within your music that really grabs your listener by the ear and really maintains their attention. And this is by using a really underused feature within your machine called macros. My name is Rob. I'm the creator of Machine the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual. And um, what we're going to do right now is jump on over to Machine and I'm going to show you exactly how to utilize macros to make music that commands your listener's attention and is less boring, less stagnant and repetitive so that you can grab your listener by the ear and really hold on to their attention by using evolving um, and dynamic soundscapes within your music. So let's go ahead and jump on over there and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so really quickly before we get started, I want to make sure that we are both on the same page and that you understand what macros actually are and what they're used for. Basically what macros are, are a feature within the machine that gives you quick access to your most important parameters or knobs on machine, okay? So it allows you, for example, I've got a chorus, an ice, a, compress a compressor, and a filter thrown in there. I can basically take parameters, which are one of these individual knobs, um, and adjust and take one of these individual parameters and place them in a place that gives me quick access to them so that I don't have to jump into individual menus and edit them in that way, okay? And what makes this useful is eventually, as I'll show you, when you're recording these with automation, you can sort of do things creatively with your music that you really can't do if you were to not use macros, all right? And I know that might seem a little bit confusing, but instead of having to jump through pages and tabs to adjust creative elements of your sound, macros make it very easy for you to, to quickly adjust things, okay? So if you don't understand that now, let me just show you exactly what I mean by that. I'll show you how to do it. The step one, the first step is to make sure that you get the basics of your beat built out. I already have a basic beat built out that'll let you listen to. All right, so you don't even want to mess around with your macros until that you're pretty far into your beat. Once you've got the basics built out, as far as like the arrangement, if you want to learn more about arranging, you can watch my arrangement video, I'll link that up, as well as improving your mix. I already have a lot of things mixed in here, you know, with both um, effects like EQ, which are more of my processing to make sounds sound more polished, but I also have creative effects used when mixing as well. So if you wanna learn more about that, watch the mixing video. So do that stuff first, all right? The next step is to figure out the parameters in which you want to use to manipulate your sound. And I have some jumped up or threw up on the group level. You have to figure out which parameters would actually sound creative when adjusting them with macros, all right? So I've got a chorus loaded up, I've got ice, like I said, a compressor, and a filter loaded up. In this situation, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna show you, as I enable some of these effects, what sort of creative effect, or let you listen to, rather, the creative effect that these parameters have in the mix, okay? To, to show you how each one of these individual creative effects adjust the sound, all right? And then I'm gonna, basically twist some knobs and let you hear that and then show you a better way to adjust these using the macro. So let's let's listen to creatively how all these individual effects on this sort of uh, electric piano sound I've got, how they affect the sound. So I'm going to disable them and then enable them.
So as you can sort of hear, the chorus sort of widens out the sound and it fills it out a little bit. All right, we're gonna move on to the ice and uh, let's, let's hear what this sounds like. We've got a compressor as well, you know, and the, the main thing I'm controlling in this compressor is the gate of the sound. I think I already might have, had, oh no, I don't. I'm controlling the gate of the sound. So this is side chain linked to my kick drum, all right? Which basically means that every time my kick drum hits in the mix, the sound is ducking down a little bit, all right? So I'll let you listen to what this sounds like with after the compression. So as you might be able to hear, the kick drum should sound a little bit more prominent and the electric piano sound should duck down a little bit every single time you hear that kick drum hit, all right? And then the volume level will jump back up. So let's listen to that again. All right, and lastly, I've got a filter thrown on here. And the filter is basically just going to control the amount of audio frequencies that I'm letting in in this sound. All right, I'll let you listen to the filter and see what that sounds like. Okay, so three pretty useful creative effects or four rather. Basically what I want to do with my macros is I'm going to jump in with my macros and assign the most important knobs out of all these individual creative effects to a macro so that I have easy access to them and don't have to jump individually into all of these menus. I can just control them all from the same place. So what I'm gonna do is on this course, I'm gonna take this mix output. The mix output on the chorus is going to make the sound a little bit more wide at times so that we can play around with the width and the narrowness and the fullness of the sound with the macro. The ice sort of adds some level of like brilliance and shine to the sound. I'm going to take the mix of that ice as well so I can mix in some ice at certain points within this sound. The compressor, like we said, we have the gain, the sidechain gain. So that's going to allow us to control how much ducking is occurring within this uh, sidechain compression so we can turn it down a little bit or turn it up and that might have a useful effect and finally the filter I'm going to control the cutoff point with the macro so that we can do a little uh, filter sweep when we want to okay so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to first assign our macros to those knobs in which we just named all right so let's do that first we're going to we're on the group tab we're going to select this little channel we're going to go to macro all right and we're going to make sure that we're selecting pages and then this is where we access our macro. I already have a whole bunch set up so I'm going to disable all of these to make sure that we can start from scratch and show you exactly what is going on. Oops. So this is what it would look like starting from scratch. All right. So we're on the group level for the electric piano. Let me reiterate that. So we went to this channel setting over to macros, made sure that pages was selected, all right? And pages appears after you select this little drop down tab, so it won't appear otherwise. Select pages, and then there's a plus button right here, and this is gonna allow us to add a page of macros, all right? At this point, we want to jump in and assign those knobs in which we just talked about. So the chorus, we wanna control the mix of the chorus, like we said. The ice, we wanna control the mix of the ice. The compressor, we wanna control the gain. And the filter, we wanna control the cutoff point. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign all those macros. It's gonna give us access to those knobs at this level in our mix, all right? So chorus, mix, all right? You see how simple that was? I'll reset it just to reiterate. We select the first macro, select which knob we want to assign right here. We know we want the chorus, so we're gonna select chorus and then mix. All right, and we're gonna label that chorus just to make sure. We're gonna do the second one now. And uh, we're going to select which knob we want to assign. We want to assign the ice and then the mix. 
as well. So ice was selected under these drop down settings. We have slots. Slots is basically just giving you a view of what effects you have listed inside of this parameter. So we have the ice, like we said, and then we want the mix. Let's do that one more time. Ice, mix. Okay. So that is our ice. And I like to label these up here as well because otherwise you won't be able to immediately know what parameters you're adjusting when you're using your macro. So make sure that you double click on top and then edit and write in the name, all right? So the third macro, we're gonna select compressor and then sidechain input and then the gain, all right? Because we want to play around with the gain and we're gonna put this on, on side, let's label it sidechain to be more specific. Then we're gonna select our fourth macro, press select, filter, Make sure we select main and then the cutoff point. And that's going to allow us to cut off the point of our resonance. So now with the macros, we have four easy slots, four macros assigned that we have easy access to, to adjust the most important creative elements of this entire mix in one location without having to jump into in and out of menus. All right. And as you're about to see, this helps you make creative adjustments to your music on the fly so that your music can evolve and change very easily without you having to do a whole bunch. So I can sort of twist these knobs and mess around with them and then record that in automation in order to create some more dynamic things that are going on in the music. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna experiment with this, let you guys sort of hear what these different elements sound like and then automate them in machine. And one important thing to realize is that when we eventually record these automated um, things in machine, when it records the movement of these knobs, it's going to assign that same movement to the individual levels here inside of your mixing view, okay? So as I adjust the macro for the mix and the chorus, it's gonna do the same thing and record that same information for our macros, all right? So let's jump in and experiment. And I want you to pay attention to the sound because it's gonna be slightly subtle. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and make sure we can be a little bit more prominent. Take this right here. And uh, all right, let's, let's do it like that. Ice selected correctly, all right. So let's jump in here and get it. I'm gonna sort of record some of these automated things that I just played around with because I have a general understanding of what I want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in one by one and adjust the settings, right? And record that in just to make sure that I get the precise amount that I want for each one of these. So shift record to count in, and then I'm gonna press and hold the auto button if you have a machine studio, and then adjust these knobs, all right? Make, sh make sure also when you record the automation that you start at the point in which you want the constant to be. So meaning as you're gonna see, like if I started my course here, th that level would be applied as a base, if that makes any sense. So you need to make sure that you start it at zero and then increase it from there. So let's, let's go ahead and record this.
All right, so I'm going to jump back and forth between this macro recorded pattern and the original pattern to let you hear the difference. Let you sort of hear with your own ears how the subtle like evolution of this sound is influenced by these macros and how you're you able to quickly create something more dynamic by just assigning some macros. All right, so I'll play the original pattern first and then the macro. All right, so subtle, but still useful at the same time. You know, we could even go in a little bit further and throw in like a big metaverb or something to make things like really big and um, bright. Or we could use a lo-fi at some points to make it more crunchy. There are a lot of different things you can do with your macros to sort of create different things going on at different points within your beats. And as I said, it's super easy to make. You know, for example, I could utilize this macro recorded version, the, the second pattern that I created, at, you know at a certain point in the beat or I could use the first one at a certain point in the beat so that the same melody is never actually the same exact tone and the same doesn't have the same exact vibe going on at the same place in the same time during the music all right and that makes it really simple really easy and really straightforward for you to sort of make something more complicated and more um, I guess polished than just a simple looped melody, all right? So obviously at this point, you're still watching this video, you're serious right now about improving your skills and your sound on machine. If you're the type of person that wants to get straight to the point with machine, to get to the point where you can do things like I just did, you know, without having to suffer through months of searching around on YouTube for the answers and watching, you know, every little video here and there, only to, to be frustrated because you're not getting the bigger picture about machine and you're not learning a process that you can use, a formula, if you will, to make better music. If you'd like to cut months or probably years off your learning curve to quickly master machine's creative workflow, I recommend that you grab a copy of my book. It's called Machine, the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual. It's an 89-page guide for you as a machine producer that dives in deep into the details of machine, okay? It's focused on teaching you the skills that you need to make album quality beats using the machine platform. So from beginning to end, I'm gonna show you techniques like I just did to understand how to mix better on machine, to understand the concepts that you need to make better drum grooves on machine or to sample better or to understand the hardware and software workflow. There's a ton of great information in here. What I need you to do in order to, uh, to grab a copy of this guide is click the link below, okay? And if you're interested, I've got a really special deal going on right now where you can get a copy of this book for an insanely discounted price. This book usually sells for $48. And um, basically today you can get your copy of this book for just a buck. Seriously, just one dollar. All right, you're gonna be taken to it. When you click the link in the description, you're gonna be taken to a page that looks like this. We can find out more information about what's inside of the book. Then you're going to click the big button and you're gonna land upon a page that looks like this where you enter your name and your payment information. Like I said, it's literally a dollar. No catch, no strings attached. Take advantage of this deal while you still can before it ends, all right? Grab a copy of this book. Understand the professional techniques to improve your sound on machine, all right? Again, my name is Rob. I am the creator of hiphoprally.com and this book, Machine the Hip Hop Beat Maker's Missing Manual. Subscribe below to make sure that you stay up to date on the great content that I'm posting for free every single day. Even if you don't decide to grab the guide now, I know that you're going to find a lot of value out, out of this channel. So subscribe below to get more information about Machine and how to utilize this piece of hardware and software to make great music. I'll talk to you later. Peace.